Hello and welcome to Sahara TV. Last year, the nation and even the world was shaken by news of the lynching of four boys in a small town in River State, who are now known as the Alu Four. What was particularly incomprehensible to many was the ineffectuality of police officers at, at the scene. That was a debacle, and as if to open a wound unhealed, two young men were murdered in the same fashion on the outskirts on Lake, of Lagos on July 23. The question on the lips of many Nigerians is if indeed the police is your friend. To shed light on extrajudicial extra killings today is the spokesman for the Nigerian police force, CSP Frank Mba. Hello, Mr. Mba. Thank you for joining us today. It's really my pleasure being on this program, and I say good evening if it is evening over there. Well, it's actually afternoon. So how are things going in Nigeria at the moment? I just, you know, before we get into questions, I'd like to get an update on what's happening in Edo State. We hear that um, a human rights lawyer has been kidnapped and four police officers were killed. Well, that, that, that is quite an unfortunate incident, but unfortunately, again, it is true. Um, the incident happened on 23rd, on 23rd of this month, and at about 3:30 p.m. Nigerian time, okay. um, the the human rights lawyer uh, Chief Mike Zokome, uh, the senior advocate of Nigeria, was on his way towards Auchi area when um, some unknown gunmen. Um, and with very sophisticated reports were reported to have blocked the road. Um, as at the time the police got a report, they got a distress call um, from, from a concerned citizen who provided very scanty information. Um, they, 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 they proceeded to the scene, a, a, a patrol vehicle led by the divisional police officer in charge of the area. The information they had never gave them the true picture, the fact that um, this was a very massive and sophisticated um, um, attack going on, they probably thought it was just um, a, a, very, a, a very simple um, law enforcement issue, and they thought they could just go in there and uh, deal with it. On their way, they were ambushed by the gunmen, and um, a gunfire ensued at the end of which um, two police officers died at the, uh, at the spot. Um, two others were seriously injured. They were rushed to the hospital and eventually gave up the dose. Um, some of the robbers, which was actually clear, because they, they, as at the time they left their own area, they were also blood stains all over, suggesting that they were also probably, um, they must also have sustained bullet wounds. Um, but they didn't, they, 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 they left, of course, with um, um, Michael Zokobi and uh, his driver. And it was at this point in time that it became clear that perhaps uh, the motive of the attack was actually kidnap and not just mere robbery, uh, not just armed robbery as was as was thought as at the time the firing was going on. Okay. And, um, so it's obvious that this that was, was a case situation. of, yes, it's obvious this was a case of miscommunication. And I expect that the uh, police commissioner in Edo State will be thinking of carrying out some kind of investigation to find out where Mr. Ozekome is. Investigations have already commenced. Uh, the inspector general of police, uh, the man at the affairs, the, the man who is um, in charge of the operational and administrative, who, who, who administratively and operationally controls the Nigerian police force, IGP Mohamed Daira Baka, has already spoken to the Commissioner of Police this morning, and he has already given very clear court instructions that the command must do everything humanly and operationally possible to ensure that that crime is solved and that um, Zokome and whoever, any other person kidnapped with them, um, is rescued and rescued on hot. Um, as I speak to you, a massive man hot by security operatives have already begun. Um, the, the, the Nigerian police uh, force, a do state police command, is working in conjunction um, with other security agencies within the state 
and uh, we are consciously hopeful um, that this crime will be solved and solved in record time. Okay, well, we all hope for that. But I'm just going to connect what you just said now to what happened uh, in Badagri uh, on July 23. A special police team was initially formed to investigate what happened in Badagri. A lot of people were fired, some people were dismissed. For example, the station officer, the tra traditional ruler of, of, the, of the community, was arrested. It looked like, you know, the, the police force was acting swiftly to what happened, but in the past weeks, we haven't, had any, we haven't heard anything new apart from what was already reported. So I'm just going to ask you, how far have you gone in bringing the murderers to book? Well, let, 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 let me start um, because let me start with the Port Harcourt incident. Um, uh, the, the truth about this matter is that we had already concluded investigations as it relates to the ALUFO, um, all the persons implicated, except for two of them that are still on the run. And you could describe them as fugitives now, um, have been picked up. Um, we have actually arraigned the suspect before a court of law, and prosecution is ongoing. And you must understand that when you are prosecuting uh, suspects in connection with murder cases anywhere in the world, um, it can be laborious, it can be uh, demanding. Um, the, the, the defense lawyers are going to throw all manners of spammers in your wheel. Um, so you must be prepared for all forms of um, all forms of legal frustrations because they're going to do everything humanly possible to frustrate justice or to delay justice. And and that's that, that the prosecution is ongoing, and we are very hopeful that at the end of the day, justice will be served. And um, the, the, the truth again is that um, the, the, the issues of lynching is not a is not a widespread thing in Nigeria. What you have seen has been isolated cases, isolated incidents that do not in any way represent the, the, the national culture of Nigerians. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Mba. Mr. Mba, our reports do not indicate that. Lynching has been something, it's, preve it's pre prevalent in the Nigerian community. It's been there for years. It's been there for time. No, no, and no, no, many, no. sorry, let's, many have let's, raised let's concerns, many have raised concerns that mob justice no. is prevalent where there's impunity for crimes. An international example was uh, pre-civil rights era and the lynching of Emmett Till in the Jim Crow South. I don't know if you're familiar with that story, but that's something that's very important here in America. So is that true? for Nigeria, do we have impunity to crimes? Is the Nigerian police force helpless or even tolerant to this type are of you, violence? I, you see, Nina, I, I, let, let's, make, let's make this discussion a very intellectually engaging one. Um, I, I, I taught you asking me questions because if you are sitting on top of this pro program as a presenter and you are taking positions, then it will, it will, it will, it will blow the line of argument, the line of presentation, and it will make it difficult for, for our listeners who are probably independent-minded to actually make informed decisions. My position is that lynching is not a widespread thing in Nigeria. It does not represent the national culture of Nigeria. And that in any way does not mean it does not happen. In, in occasionally it could happen because these are things that happen spontaneously. They are spontaneous overflow of very powerful emotions that are occur um, uh, once in a while. And you will agree with me that after the Alu 4 incident, we've not had any other kind of scenario except of recent when we had the incident at Badagri. And, and again, you will also need to understand that usually it is also carried out by very young people. And then we begin to look, it, 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 it is not just purely a law enforcement thing. It is something that has to do with 
upbringing. It has something to do with family roles, the way we are brought up. It has something to do also with the roles of the media, what kind of themes our children are exposed to, what kind of programs on TV. When you have a situation where the kids are overfed with films and movies that portray so much violence, unconsciously you begin to infect and infect infect them with certain culture that are naturally not the culture of our people. Well, so that's, it, that's a problem a that is beyond... It is a very simplistic and very deficit. Uh, I mean, it is a very simplistic, um, too simplistic for anyone to just put the whole blame on the doorstep of policing. Of yes, police of yes, yes, that's also, a problem that's you, beyond... The, the excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Mbah. That's a problem that's beyond the police force, teaching people how to lynch. But the police force is there to enforce law and keep order. When you have policemen standing by docile while people are, while people are being killed and lynched, there's a problem. And we have to, you know, the Nigerians want to know why. Why are policemen helpless let, let, or are they the not good helpless? Thing here, the, 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 good, the good thing here is that in all situations where we find our police officers acting in a manner inconsistent with their oath of offices, there have always been a consequence or consequences. If you remember clearly the incident at Anufo, if one of the police, a police officer who was found to have arrived at the scene and it was clear that he didn't act the way he should have acted as a police officer. He was arrested. Okay, he so after the arrest, what's the happening? Room. After he the arrest, what's could happening? You, could you allow me to, can you allow me? He was arrested. After the he arrest, ex sorry, the room, Mr. Mbaa, what's happening? After the arrest, what's Hold happening? You, could you, what could is you happening, please? Me? You just have to listen to me. Nina, if you want a, 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 if you want a very useful conversation, you just have to listen to me. Mr. Mba, please, please what's happening? We want to he know what's tried. happening. Listen to me so that you can get the grab. Okay. You, you can get the flow. That police officer we have, was arrested. We have, sorry, Mr. Mba, we have very few time allotted for this interview. So we're trying to make sure that we give every topic adequate Respond to adequate attention. We just like to know what's happening with the police it, it, it officers who serve, have been arrested. It will also not serve, but remember, Nina, it will also not serve the purpose of this interview if you don't give a topic enough enough coverage. Um, it, we can, it, it, for me, we can talk ten topics in ten minutes, and at the end of the day, our listeners will go home with nothing. But it's, 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 it, you, you are the driver seat. So you, you hit the questions and I provide the answers okay. as, much, as quickly as I can. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mbaa. We're just going to go on to the next question here. So um, we're going to come back to the killing of a commercial motorcyclist in Ikorodu and also the killing of four students in Uniuyo. Reports over the years suggest that the Nigerian police force puts a low premium on hu human life with trigger-happy officers killing the same people they were meant to protect. And that has made it difficult to believe that the police is indeed your friend. So can you please tell us how much power is vested in the police to enforce the law? And what is IGP Abubakar well, doing well, to again, curb and again, weed out these again, erring officers? Again, Mina, again, I totally disagree with you. It is, it is most uncharitable for you to take positions suggesting that police officers pay little or no premium on human life. First of all, okay. let me make this clear. Yes. Force are recruited, trained, equipped, and paid with a taxpayer's money for the sole purpose of protecting lives and property. Okay, so can you explain it why, is, can you is. explain why, can you give, can you explain why some police now, officers have killed innocent Nigerians? Or does the law allow police officers to use lethal force in cases where lethal force shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't be used? Events, if you are following events in Nigeria, you will understand that the Nigerian police force have a standing rule of engagement. For every operation you go to, 
There are rules of engagement that regulate how you use your firearms and your lethal weapons. Okay. And in any situation where you are found to have used your weapon in a manner inconsistent with those clear standing rules of engagement, there are consequences. There have not been any police officer, to the best of my knowledge, who have carelessly pulled his tr a trigger and has not paid dearly for it. What do you mean if by you paid dearly? Could you, could you contextualize that statement? Mina can, you, Mina, can you allow me to make this point, please? What do you mean, by, you pay, what do you mean by paid clearly, please? In Lagos, who was reported to have killed an innocent Nigerian during the protest over the oil subsidy, mm -hmm. that police officer, even though he was a very senior police officer, he was arrested, he was dismissed, and he's currently being prosecuted. Every situation in Nigeria where a police officer has used his firearm carelessly, he, there has always been consequences. And you must remember that the, the, when you have a police force, that have a population of over 350,000 officers and men. They are most, they, you, you cannot rule out the possibility that there could be mistakes, there could be errors, and there could be situations where one or two of these officers must have behaved in a not professional manner. But that, 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 that will not be a, 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 a enough reason for you to label the entire officers and men of Nigerian police force who are laboring and working day and night to keep Nigerians safe, who, 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 who put their lives on the line consistently, who, who, whose family are exposed to all kinds of dangers and deprivation because of their love for their country, it will be most uncharitable for, for you to label them in such very negative and strong terms. I take exception to that, and I want to say police officers in Nigeria are very hardworking. They are loyal to the Constitution. They work day and night to keep Nigeria and keep the streets of this country safe. And the fact that there are a few of them who once in a while have behaved in, in manners that are inconsistent with their oath of offices is not enough for us to, 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 to generally condemn the entire officers and men of the force here. Okay, Mr. Amber, so what about those police officers who have been found erring? When you said they pay dearly, I would just love it. I would love you to contextualize. What do you mean by pay dearly? I have just given you a clear example, and that is what you could call the locus classicus case. That is a standard treatment for police officers who misuse their firearms. I've told you that the first thing is you will be arrested, you will be investigated, and once the investigation shows clearly that you have acted in a manner inconsistent with the code of conduct, you will be dismissed. And after the dismissal, you will be prosecuted. And the prosecution is the height of it all, because you could be jailed, you could actually even get a death sentence. And so that is, for me, if you look at the, 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 the situation in the United States where, the, where, where, where a, 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 an army officer, I think a major, um, went berserk and shot several of his colleagues, that's exactly what happened. He was arrested, he was dismissed, he was tried, and he has been convicted. These are standard procedures. And if you know the, the, what the current inspector general of police um, stands for, you will know he's a non he's a no nonsense police chief who has who, who has paid his dues and has worked his way diligently to the top and has and and since ever since he, he took over the the, the, the the command of the Nigerian police force has come up with so many strategies training and retraining of officers and men, particularly when it comes to issues of issues of arm, arms handling and musketry, um, the, the review of, of our police training manuals and, and, and schemes in order to deepen and incorporate new, angle, new angles of human rights training into our curriculum in our training colleges and institutions. So many workshops, so many seminars, so many openings for police officers on issues of human rights, on issues of dealing 
with women and children on issues that relate to domestic violence and so many other new areas of policing. And I think we must not be in a hurry to write off officers and men that truly represent the very heart of the safety of this nation. Okay, so let's not lose direction of this interview. So from what you just said, can you give us an update about the police officers uh, who, who, were, who killed a commercial motorcyclist in Lagos and those involved in the killing of four students in Uniuyo? Well, the Uniuyo is um, a much more complicated thing. There, are, there is no, no facts on the ground so far that suggest that those killings were done by police officers. And you must remember that even in that incident, um, there was a report by Sahara reporters that was wrong. Um, when the, 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 some other student union leaders were actually going to you to resolve that matter, um, they had an accident on the road. Sahara reporters um, erroneously reported that the accident was caused by an accident, by, by, by police um, roadblock. I think subsequently they got to know that that was, that was, that was not a true position. The same thing happened, and then on the issue of the killing of the students at UNIO, um, you will remember that, to the best of my knowledge, one student died in that incident. And even the student that died um, had nothing to do with the police officers. As a matter of fact, he died inside the campus, and uh, he, he, his body was brought from the campus to the gate by the students themselves. And even when the body was examined, we found as matches caught on him all over. Police officers in Nigeria don't carry matches. There was no blood wound on him. And again, we also discovered that there were cause crisis within the school. There were a set of the court boys who supported um, the, 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 the action of the university, while there was another set of court boys who opposed the action of the university. So we strongly suspect that that death must have been caused uh, by, by the court crisis um, that, that, that occurred after the closure of the university. But on the issue of the, the killing of, an, of the bike rider in Ikorodu, yes, clearly there are evidence that suggests um, that the police officers um, are, have actually, were culpable. And as I speak to you, the entire members of the patrol team have been arrested. Investigations are ongoing. The Inspector General of Police have already assured the relatives that um, there will be no cover-up and um, the police will bring to book um, if men, if, if at the end of the investigation, um, are our suspicion, um, our, our suspicion side as established by empirical facts. So I can tell you that here we don't do any cover up. And uh, let, 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 let me let me let me just be very straight to you. Mm -hmm. there, there is no profession in this world where people don't make mistakes sometimes. And there is no profession in this world that is that 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 you have its member consisting of angels and saints. I've seen journalists who have aired, who have done things that are not, are not professionally permitted. I have seen doctors who have committed great professional errors. I have seen lawyers who have misled their clients. I have seen a whole newspaper in the United Kingdom, News of the World, being closed down because such a mega news body was found to have compromised on ethics and values of, of journalism. So it, 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 it is too simplicity for you to brand entire police force in Nigeria okay. irresponsible simply okay. because a couple of his men have been found to have acted in manner. Yes, they, yes, they, they, Mr. Mr. They, Mr. 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 Way, Mr. Mr. I'm very sure, I'm very sure that many of our viewers agree with you. But just to rectify this, are you saying that the police who are on the scene at the protest in Unio did not fire any bullet against the students? Just to rectify this? Yeah. There is no evidence whatsoever. What do you mean? There's no if evidence. You, Are you, you know saying? Me, if you know me, if you know me very yes. well, you will know that I, Frank Mba, will not defend any act, any illegality. I will stand on my honor anywhere that I will not defend any illegality. So, Except are you saying do, that the, they did not do that? I don't understand what you mean by uh, there's no evidence. 
they our viewers are watching yes me. the fact that we presented to us does not suggest that the debt we cost the death of the student was caused by policemen. And I know of just one death. So I am actually surprised when you are talking of four deaths. I know of a student that was killed on the day of the crisis. And the information I have was that that student died right inside the campus. And you will remember that in Nigeria, Police officers cannot move into the campus, no matter the grave, the, the no, 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 no matter the intensity of the crisis. The the rule in Nigeria states that if there is a crisis, let's say for example in University of Lagos, the police officers can only come as close as the gate of the campus, okay. and they cannot move into the university. Or said they have a written permission, a written invitation from the vice chancellor. On the date that the crisis in Union Hill started, police officers moved to the gate and they stood, they kept vigil at the gate until the student came out of the university and attempted to march into town and they stopped them. And as at the time they were coming out from the university, they already have the, 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 the body of the deceased student with them. And so it, it, it will be unfair. It is, it is not, it, there is no way you, it does, there is no way it can connect. You can connect a death that occurred inside the campus with police officers who are, who are kilometers away from okay, okay. inside the campus. Okay, what about bribery and corruption in the police force? Many Nigerians agree this is an age-long problem, but techno technology has made it easier to isolate a few corrupt officers, even though that's just one in a million. Is it simply enough to dismiss such officers? And when I say this, I'm talking about the recent story about uh, the police officer who was caught using a, a cell phone asking for bribery. Is it simply enough corruption, to dismiss such officers? Corruption, corruption is, a wide, is a worldwide phenomenon. I have seen corruption in so, India. Yes, yes. I have seen, hold on, I'm going to answer your question. Yeah, be, I yeah because I, I, I'm waiting China. for that. I have seen corruption in China. I have seen corruption in United States. I have seen corruption in UK. I have seen corruption in Spain. I have seen corruption in the media. I have seen corruption in, 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 in legal practice in the court system. I have seen corruption in, in the aviation sector. I have seen corruption everywhere. The good thing about the police force in Nigeria is that we are the only organization that continuously fights corruption even within our own ranks. We are the only organization in Nigeria that will boldly identify our own that is corrupt, punish them, expose them, name them, and shame them, and bring them to book. Okay. The truth is, when you have a police force that is as large as a nation state, and I want you to check this out, the, the population of the Nigerian police force is bigger than the population of Luxembourg. The population of Nigerian police force is more than 25% of the population of Botswana. The population of Nigerian police force is about 60% the population of Guinea-Bissau. And when you have such a massive collection of men, they are not a massive, a mass collection of angels and saints. You so does that so are you trying to justify are you trying to justify listen, I'm not justifying okay. corruption I am telling you why it is virtually impossible to have a 350,000 men and women and you will not find one of them is David. In fact if you have such a collection of people then they are either superhuman or they are not human beings in the real sense of the word. Okay, the if question Jesus here. Jesus Christ, who is both God and man, could select just 12 people 
And even with his godly nature and disposition, one of the twelve that he carefully selected still went astray. Mr. Samba, the question more? here, the question here is, are police officers being adequately trained and compensated? I, the, the point remains here that the, the good thing, the most important thing is the system, the Nigerian police force abhors corruption and we don't tolerate corruption. Mm -hmm. We are properly trained. If we are not properly trained, Nigerian police personnel will not be bringing the kind of laurels we bring back home whenever we are in international emissions and engagement. You will recall very clearly that for every single international mission Nigerian police officers have participated in, under either under the under ECOWAS, under AU, or under the United Nations, whether in in Africa, in Asia, or in Europe, we have consistently distinguished ourselves. That is that, that that is an indication of the kind of quality training we are giving back home. That's the, that's an indication of the, the, the quality of our men and women. That's an indication of the quality of our character and composition. Okay, talking about but the quality the, talking about the quality now, of the men that the Nigerian police force produces, uh, a few months ago pictures surfaced online and in the media about the Lagos Police College. And the pictures just show that police college as decrepit and literally in a state of disrepair. It got the attention of President Goodluck Jonathan, who ordered complete rehabilitation of the place. This should have been done a long time ago. Was this an overs oversight you know, by the present know, you know, and past you know, you IGs? Know, Nina, you know, it is very easy to apportion blames. It is, it is the simplest thing to do. The good thing is that there are men and women in their face of this nation today, who are ready to right the wrongs of the past. I think that is, that, that is reassuring to me. The fact that the Nigerian police force today is running such a transparent system, is running such, it, 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 is, is becoming increasingly democratic to the extent of allowing the media to actually come that close and see such so the, 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 the situation in the college, for me, that is a step in the right direction. You will, rec you will agree with me. If, 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 if the Nigerian police force is all running a democratic and a transparent system, no, no media can even go close to it. But that's not the question, Mr. Again, Mbar. That's not the question. You, you, me to land. That's not the question. Again, the good thing we, don't have an, we don't have enough time. I just want you to answer the question. Did... What President Goodluck Jonathan have to come there for there to be an overhaul I and mean, rehabilitation that, of the that, place. That Was this an oversight? Of, the Nigerian police force is under the federal government. The rot you saw did not happen under the, 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 the ID ship of MD Abubakar. It did not occur under the presidency of Goodluck Jonathan. And yet, both of them have taken care of that. I wish you could visit police college today. So I think what you have just seen is, is a collaboration between the federal government and, and the civil society. What is the job mm -hmm. of, of, of the media in the first instance? The media has simply done its job. And what is the job of the federal government? The federal government has simply responded and fixed the situation and fix it right. So in and rounding up, you're saying that the police that college... You're, in rounding up, you're saying right now the police college has been rehabilitated. I would be surprised if you are not aware because it was a big news. The police college in Ikeja today is, is, is comparable to any police academy or any police training institution in the world. And that's the beauty of it. And, and you need to visit the place and see how sweet the police college is looking today. So for me, it, 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 is, it is just a sign of, of the very transparent way Nigeria is run as a nation. It is just, it, 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 for me, that is kudos to democracy. The fact that the media is doing their job, members of the media, members of the fourth state of the realm are doing their job, and the fact that we have a government and the presidency that is as responsive and as and, and uh, as responsive as good luck Jonathan, who will see such a thing being exposed and and quickly step in to fix it. 
And in spite of the fact that this work didn't occur under his watch, in spite of the fact that this work didn't occur under the watch of the current IDP. And that's okay. what governance is all about. Governance is about identifying problems and solving problems. And okay, that's thank exactly you very what much. The president has done. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, uh, Mr. Mba. Thank you for clarifying many things that we were hoping you would rectify and clarify for our viewers. Uh, we hope to see you very soon again to talk to us about more recent, more developments in the, with the Nigerian police force and the Nigerian situation in general. Uh, well, we just had Mr. Frank Mba talking about the police force role, the police force's role in the lynching and also how the police force is trying to curb corruption in Nigeria. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We have more interviews coming. This is Sahara TV.